What is up everyone, it is Richard and Paul here on today's podcast and we are going to be talking about social media, the dangers of buying your audience, the dangers of selling stuff that you don't know what you're talking about and we're going to show you and discuss a little bit on our opinions on social media, how we have built engaging followings that are actually willing to go out there and do business with you and how you can do the same. Are you that TikToker? <laughs> 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 Why did you have to say that? <laughs> Mate, I've I've worked too hard just to be known as the TikTok guy. That's the thing. Why do you think it is? Why do you think that when you're out and about well, I know why it is. Uh, yeah. It's because people obviously see a lot of your content. Yeah. You're telling us a funny story about um an older guy that look, I'm in that bracket, you know? No, no, I mean, the guy I was talking about was like 60. So he's at least five years older than you, right? <laughs> so <laughs> the, the guy like comes up to me and he's like, oh, all right, mate, are you that guy from TikTok? And I'm like, well, part, part of me, I have to say yes, don't I? Right? Sometimes I just lie if they're pissed in that and they won't really recognise. Because people have said to me before, you look like that boy with all the motors. And I go, aye, right, sound mate, catch you. And I just leave, right? And I know they're talking about me. But um, like, this guy was like older, like 60 odds. And I'm just like... What are you doing on that app? You have man boxer sniffing and it's like so <laughs> weird, like why are you on the app? But it just like I feel like sitting down and saying to people, like, yeah, sit down, I am the guy from TikTok, but here's the other things I've done. I don't know why I just have like a not even a chip on my shoulder, but it's just something. It's like when I'm driving my X3, and obviously like the X3M comp is such a nice car, right? And it's actually my favourite car that I've had. And people go, Oh, nice car, mate. And I'm sitting trying not to say I've got McLaren. I'm like, like do you know that way because you just like yeah. you want to give people the full scope view There's, like obviously your audience is different to mine right mine is generally younger and found on different social medias from yours mm-hmm. right have you ever had any like real weird like you've been in Glen Eagles changing rooms with like your balls out Floss in your <laughs> ass crack, right? And some guys just came over and smacked you in the bum, went, hey, Paul with the properties. Like, have you ever had anything? Because honestly, mate, no joke, for the size of my audience, which isn't humongous, I think my audience is very engaged, though. I get recognised or stopped every single day. I've, obviously, if I'm in the office all day, then go home, no. But anytime I'm in town, anytime I go out, Anywhere, mate, it always happens. It always happens, which is kind of mental, to yeah. be fair. Well, I've never had someone while I was flossing my arse crack yeah, come good. up <laughs> and slap my arse. I've never had that. No? No. Ah, <laughs> so you're missing out. You're missing out. <laughs> David uh, Lloyd's a place to be. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, uh, we we obviously, both of us, were, were very vocal on, on social as well as, um, like, we, we run ads as well. Like, it's, it's, it's another thing to keep in mind. So for those that are in the, the property space, or interest in property, they'll have likely seen some of my content. So there's, yeah, I guess everywhere I go, I, you know, I bump into people. Um, one of the places that, well, I grew up in, in Pollock, and Pollock transformed when it had a whole infrastructure change, including building Silverburn Shop Mall, Silverburn, which yeah. was, was big for the area. And now I just, I, I, like, I couldn't tell you the last time I've been to Silverburn. Well, that's You were lie. literally in Silverburn yeah. with me maybe six months ago in Starbucks. Yeah, so, so in the last year, one or twice right mm-hmm. uh, you know before that again once every other year Aye. and the reason being is that anytime around at silverburn i would bump into way too many people way too many people like people from the youth well yeah on a pole <laughs> you get any teeth I can borrow? <laughs> Why do you automatically think everybody I used to grow up with was junkies? Because <laughs> I've fucking seen photos of what you looked like, so I can't imagine they were much better. <laughs> oh my god, Jeez, oh, you can't. You know, you realise that if anybody from Pollock is watching this, that you're you're a, be that's it. You know, your your name's been marked. That's it. You can't go to Pollock now. I can't go to Silver. I, mean, I go to Silver like every day as well. <laughs> So, I, yeah, and it wasn't, it, it, I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with getting noticed. Like, I like it, especially in Glen Eagles. It happens all the time, it is. The it's, type it's of people regular, there as well, it's awesome. Know? Um, and it's funny when you're, 
chilling in the sauna or whatever and 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 a guy's there and you know that they're itching to talk to you or something like that Aye. you know and and, <laughs> and, and and then you you start talking and then it's it's a bit like oh i've seen you on linkedin i've seen you on you know tiktok i'm, I'm getting that a few times Good a few man. people say you've had a couple of videos boom mate after you sat yeah. down you had a strategy session with me you kind of <laughs> just started getting views <laughs> tiktok is uh, my favorite platform of all right now and I need to do more of it. Like at the beginning, I, I went, when I first launched on TikTok, which wasn't that long ago, I went all out for a month and I really enjoyed it. I was engaging, I was interacting. And my the conversation changed at the beginning. You were definitely arguing with... Um, 12 year olds and stuff right? <laughs> it was just it was it was entertaining and funny at the same time but at the same time I'm sitting having a reality check going what the fuck am I doing here like, like, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed yeah. to be running a business making money having my own life yep. and, and, and I'm caught up <laughs> engaging with you know insignificant conversations but I realised that by doing that, I actually spread your reach because, you yeah. know, it kind of it pulls you in, doesn't it? It's that kind and of quid pro quo, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like you, yeah. You're finding that split, like, okay, d is it a bit daft intrinsically? Me arguing with a faceless, nameless account? Yes. Is it going to potentially get me 100, 200, 300,000 views? Yeah. Also, yes. The, the funny thing about uh, social media because everyone's looking at what's the social media hacks? How can I grow my audience? How can I grow my following? Now, here's one thing that I know. Uh, firstly, I have never bought followers, never bought likes, never bought um, comments, you name it. Mm -hmm. And when you go to socialblade.com, I believe it is, and you type in usernames of anybody who's got big followings, it's like people get impressed with people who've got big followings. Yeah. Like, why not? It's social currency. You click on so If you have two people doing the same industry, you click on one guy's page and he's got 100K followers, click on another guy's page, he's got 900 you do not have an idea who provides a better service, but that social currency would lead you to believe that that person with 100K is the expert. Yeah, so, so just so you know, like, I, I I, do not care what people do. Like, I have got, like, I am not bored of people by followers, Yeah. right? Like, each to their own. Mm. The problem I, I get with it, and I know a number of people like this who buy social followers, they buy followers, they buy likes, all of that stuff, and then teach how to grow your Instagram. Yeah, as an example of social up. media because clearly they have just bought the followers mm -hmm. so when you go to when, when people turn around and say oh my god look at this person's profile and you know and, or whatever and then you go and search and you see because on social blade it shows you oh um, two weeks ago they bought 60,000 followers because it's there yeah you know? it's like and, in and, one and, day plus 60,000 it's like so you're trying to tell me <laughs> you got 60k followers in one day and you had like 15,000 the day before like. and the, the best part is is that when you start seeing them dropping off you know, it's, it's, it's just it's blatant to see. And again, each to their own. There's no judgment, right? And I guess so many people were buying followers just to get over ten thousand, so they could have the swipe me up Influence and all that stuff. Features. Influencer features. Again, and and you do you, right? But the problem is, is that you you get led into when it comes to trying to grow an Instagram and any other social platforms, you get led into the point of having to now buy likes, having to now buy social engagement, and it's um it's just. Uh, I, I, in my opinion, the wrong way to try and create a perception not, not it's not true. So the reason the story behind this is that when I kicked off TikTok, prior to TikTok, um, I was always active in social, except I did not engage, right? I would be the guy who posted and did not engage my own audience and wondered and get annoyed at why do people not engage with me? Why do people not comment on my stuff? You know, yeah, I've, always so had, like I've always had good interaction engagement on my Instagram stories. That's where I probably hang out the most. I've always had interaction engagement and, and when people DM me, always responding off the back of that. So, so, but that's kind of like behind the scenes a little bit. It's not, yeah. it's not the front, which is posted on your grid or anything else. So, the point is, is that by posting on TikTok, like, I, I, again, I think it's the way that TikTok just pulls you in, but my first few videos started getting 6,000, 10,000, 12,000, 5,000, like, I was led into false insecurity with my first few videos which just, just hit, like, they really hit. And I'm like, oh my God, so so it's like that dopamine hit, and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to post more stuff. More. Then I'm commenting, and I'm responding to people's things. And I was engaging, I was making social, sociable. Yeah. And because I was engaging and I was doing things and started to see traction and starting to see people coming from my TikTok over to my Instagram, mm -hmm. and I'm like, holy shit, look what happens if you're actually sociable. Simultaneously, my LinkedIn had just died, although I kept on posting every single day. Why? Because I paid no attention to it. 
it was just cookie cutter stuff that was getting put out the team was posting stuff and I did not engage with anybody yeah. and it was the same with my Instagram and Facebook and then I realised oh my god like like it's clear that those platforms are not growing as much because I'm not paying them attention you're not producing and then I started to pay them attention I started to go in engaging commenting and gradually starting to build that up that I'm getting more comments more engagement people now are starting to see that ah so if Paul posts something and if, and if someone comments I'm actually going to get a response from them now yeah. and I'm now starting to teach my audience that yes I will interact with you I will engage with you it's no longer my team it's no longer me ignoring you but I tell you what that's a hard lesson because if someone wants to grow in social there's the easy way which is going buy likes buy followers do all of that shit but zero engagement they're not going to be paying customers they're not going to be paying clients they're yeah. not going to be people you can do business with or, or go if you're trying to get in a fucking club in Dubai and you're thinking so they only let people with big followers in or celebrities or something then I can understand I maybe buying some followers so that you can just flash it and go hey look but like what you said about the whole people who are in like the kind of mentorship education space who do that and sell courses on oh here's how you grow on social media right and I've never done a social media course the first social media course that I've done was the one that we built for yes right that was the first one and I don't see the difference between someone you tell me the difference if you think there's one buying 100,000 followers on Instagram, right? And then saying, hey, I'm going to show you how you can make, get 100,000 followers, right? What is the difference between that and say me going on to Binance or Crypto.com, taking a screenshot, editing my $100 of crypto to $100,000 and going on my Instagram or going on social, going anywhere one-to-one -one and saying, hey, as you can see here, I've made $100,000 in crypto. If you want to find out how to make 100k in crypto, drop me a message. Because the one that I've just said there, that is blatant fraud. So why is that any, any different? different? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I was speaking to a influencer. <clears throat> I love how that's a new title for people but who have got big followers. fucking hand right through their face, man. <laughs> and um, she gets brand deals and gets to stay in hotels for, for free and you it's know mad and, that they hardly get paid by the way they just get free shit nine yeah, times out of yeah, ten it's well, mad which I guess like, that, that's cool right each to their own and and I thought that was cool I'm like this is it's awesome she got to stay here she's doing this she mm. got to go and take pictures and do a little review of it and everything else like like pretty cool like a day in the life of an influencer who wants to travel and doing travel blogs and everything else like that that's that's awesome yeah, yeah. right it means that you're not having to pay for anything i don't like the the idea of constantly having to hustle to find a hotel that's going to put you up or a resort or whatever that may be but if that's what they want to do and it's it's fulfillment for them then, then awesome course. right but a couple of things you need to keep in mind though is that so, so again, doing my usual, we're on Social Blade, clearly seen constant drop-off because they've bought followers. And then when does that become a point where the hotels start going, yeah, l let me see your engagement. Let me see what you're actually getting in return. And this is what starts to make a lot of challenges and a lot of issues with people who are, I've got a facade. And mm -hmm. clearly, they're kind of stuck at a point where they can't grow and they're caught up in this metric of trying to look great for others, but they cannot monetize it. I know people who have perceived big followings, yet are broke, cannot monetize it. They're trying their best to try and show the perception, but can't back it up. I see it totally, look, it's crazy. From an education point of view, um, I, I, I have a sticking point when it comes to education. I believe that you've got to have gone out there and done it, not only for yourself, but really, truly, whatever it is that you're trying to go. Let's take it, for example, with um, jiu-jitsu, right? Now, it doesn't mean that a blue belt can't show you what to do and help you. Yeah, of course they can. are not going to fucking start an academy, or they shouldn't start an academy. Right, so, 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 so it's not like they <clears throat> cannot do it. They can still coach, they can still help, and, and hey, maybe they're enjoying it. But you're kind of limited to what you've got. You're still going through your own personal growth. Mm -hmm. So there's an element of coaching and learning, you know, that works simultaneously. But when you're starting to put out false things, like I've done this, I've created that, I can help you do this here, and it's kind of not backing it up because you're not yet at that level yourself, mm -hmm. that's when I have a little bit of an issue. And that's when I see where people buy those followers is that they can't back it up. Because the answer is, I can help you 
with your social media growth, having 100,000 followers or a million followers. Well, the reality is, is how they got there was not through doing the things that you need to do to grow that, it's through buying followers. Yeah. So what bullshit are they going to come up with on a course to turn around and say, look what I've done? They're not a black belt in building a following that's engaged. Like, I see people who are friends of mine who have maybe two hundred to 300,000 followers and they make millions. Mate. They have got unbelievable engaged followers. They get You've pr taken, proper brand yep. deals. And I look at them, and I look at others that have got a million, two million, and I put them side by side. And I'm like, holy shit. Why is that person not get, get clearly, yep. they are more known, yet why don't they have the same amount of following as that? Because we're going to look at social play, they've bought a whole bunch of followers. If, if I'm someone who has like 50,000 followers, let's say, right? Like if you have 50,000 real followers, there is no, and you, you are a business owner, you're providing a product, a service, access to community, whatever it is. If you have 50,000 followers, you have zero excuse to not be making at least 100 grand a year. At least, because there's that thing, what, what is it, a thousand true followers or something, that like yeah. kind of thing that people say, right? But if you've got like legit, like you're saying, a legit 200,000, 300,000, even without your own products, through being an affiliate, doing brand deals, just doing promo in general, you should be a, like a, a multi-millionaire on track to doing that. Yeah. So when people pop out with like, oh... 1.8 million followers that mate there's there's people in the uk that i see who are similar to me they're young they're driving nice cars and this and that right there's a boy who has literally the exact same cars as me right had the amg gt add the amg gt rose rush ghost rose rush ghost mclaren mclaren like everything the exact same right and i have what twenty five thousand followers on instagram and he has like 1.3 million we're, we're in the same spaces. I'm like, if you have a legit 1.3 million, you should be making me look like an absolute smelly bastard, right? <laughs> like, you should be in a Brabish G-Wagon, flying private everywhere. Like, if, if you're doing, if you have that many real followers, like you said, it's it's so easy. And it, do you know what it makes me question? See, when you see some of the brand deals that people get, like decent ones like your Calvin Klein's and this and that, I'm like, how the fuck are we sitting here in Glasgow? working out that the influencer that they're paying money to is full of shite, but them, a huge multinational company, don't have one person in the office that goes, ah, let's go on social blade. Well, well it's, that's how, when it comes to influencer marketing, take for example, like a lot of people who are in my space that I know who are good friends who partner with influencers, they don't give them um, a financial gain, they give them a percentage of what they go and sell. Yeah, it's like commission only. So, so it's commission only. And that's where you truly know whether you've got an influencer who has an engaged audience who are keen to to invest in whatever it is or yep. buy into it all. Yeah. You know, it's um that that's a difference. That's that's a big difference. It's funny how, you know, I've partnered with um, call them affiliates before and promoting various things, and I had some so-called big players with big socials who put a shout out and put a promo to one of my events in the past. And it was like crickets, crickets. Then I've had other people that are similar to you and I who have got smaller followings, more engaged, who then got way more people who came on board and worked with us. And I'm like, it just shows the difference. Yeah. It just shows the difference with the substance behind it. I mean, when it comes back to social growth and the point that I was making earlier on is that, that for me, and it does bother me. It does bother me when I see other people who have got bigger following and I look on social blade and I go clearly bought and it's frustration because it's yeah. it is fraud if you think I about it. I am petty right? enough to call them out though. You're not. Yeah. I'm petty <laughs> enough to put a post up and be like, you are a fucking dirty, <laughs> shiest and charlatan bastard. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, if I'm growing an honest following that's the, that I'm now engaging with more often and interacting with and putting content out and forcing me to level up my game in terms of the quality I'm putting out. Because if you think about it, Facebook, Instagram, uh, mainly, YouTube to a certain extent, um, not so much TikTok at the moment, but I think it's going that way. So let's take Instagram and Facebook. You kinda can't get organic content 
to just go nuts. Nah, it, it, nah, it's, nah. it happens on a rare occasion, but it just you, it's because they're they're fueled on ad spend. Yeah. So the difference is though, and they're both owned by the same company, parent company, you know, so yeah. it's no surprise there. So if you think about it though, a good strategy is is let's say you post content on a daily basis, right? Which I do, and let's say over a whole month that. Um, you put out 30 bits of content, let's say it's it's 30 reels or whatever it may be on, on Instagram, and you can use the same thing to put on Facebook. And let's say you see three bits of those content, three of those 30 videos actually did the best, right? They, they really kind of hit the most engagement. Yeah. Well, there's two things you do off that. You create more like content, because clearly that's what your audience wants. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, you can then go and boost and put some ad spend behind it and trial it with maybe 50 quid a day on each of those posts, right? So it's 150 pounds a day, right? And do that over like three days. And because you've had proof of concept that there's engagement there and people like that, you're gonna see more followers connecting with you. You're gonna see more engagement come off the back of that. You're gonna see, you know, a, a lot more. Now, the difference is from going buying followers on these websites, which is just fake followers, bot followers, people from countries that are never going to engage and everything yep. else. It's it's just it's just fakery, right? Yeah. The difference with us here is that uh, Instagram and Facebook are now rewarding you by showing your content to people who actually like your stuff. Yeah. And you're now getting real connections, real follows, people that you can monetize and do business with. Mm -hmm. And that there, you turn around and go, well, what's that cost me? It's cost me a few hundred pounds. But the difference is, is that you're not doing that on every post you go and do. You're doing it on the posts that really work and get you traction. Yeah. That there's the best way to build real followers, real engagement. And you've got to make it sociable though. Because what happens if you do that strategy and you do what I used to do in the past, not engage with people, not interact, thinking I'm, you know, I'm too busy for I don't want to do social. Let my team do that. That's a big, big mistake. Mm -hmm. I realise that if you really want to to work this social, but you've got to engage. I mean, unless you're a fucking celebrity, right, mm -hmm. or a sports athlete that's that's in like, you know, of course you're not. You're, you have agents running your stuff or whatever that may be, right? For sure. You, you don't expect a response. No. But when it's when it's like when it's us, you, you've kind of got to, you know, or you don't have to. And, and I ignore know. some shit to be fair. Yeah, look, you don't need to respond to everyone. I get that. I do but try and I do try and engage with any comment. Like I've tried well, like comment. The, TikTok's too much. TikTok you just oh, can't. Well, TikTok can, can get much. out of control. But see if you're still having an element of of engagement. Yeah, yeah for sure. That's good. You know, one of the guys that I was talking to as well says, "Look, you need to try the viral comment strategy." And I was like, "What do you mean the viral viral comment strategy?" It's a crack. Like I actually quite like. Oh, the I was idea. Just about to say people are just making shit up. I know, right? but I actually like the idea. It's like if you find. Um, certain people who are always posting. Like, I'll tell you a perfect example, right? Because I know a couple of people do this well. Take Dave Ramsey as an example. Yeah. Right? yeah. So Dave Ramsey's the. Even though I don't agree with a single I, thing he I, says. I'm with you. But that's the yeah. point I'm going to make you, right? So, like, for example, um, I just saw this today, which is the perfect example of it, the viral comment. He talks about how all debt is bad. Or, or um, people who think debt is a tool for financial success uh, are wrong. And then someone who I know. Um, posted um, only a tool would think debt as a, a tool something like that yeah, right yeah, so, roasting so, like, just, just roasted them and it's had like you know a 1300 likes I will guarantee you of those 1300 people a good 100 of them probably would have connected with that person and who follows as the viral comment right. and I quite like that I was like okay it's even better if you're verified as well because yes. verified comments sit at the top I know. Still chasing that blue tick. I'm still chasing it. Well, that. Zuckerberg's thrown his uh, you know, a bone there, so hopefully soon. Oh, is that is that actually happening? It's happening in New Zealand, Australia, right now. You can literally get see this is what's crazy. Even though like Twitter led the way with Elon Musk with the pay whatever it is, fourteen dollars a month to get verified and and I, I did the numbers. I mean, how many users do you think um Facebook's got? Like like if you Facebook think, must have Way over a billion. So Facebook users, if you think about it, Facebook have 2.96 billion active users. Right, I kind of call cap on that a little bit. There must be at least 10% of those people are dead by now. Let's call it a billion. 
Right. Let's call it two billion. I'm happy to call it two billion, but there's some two dead billion. people on that platform. So two, two, two billion. I've got dead family members in that on that platform that are not active. It's um, this is the part that that freaks me out. Two billion, right? Two billion. So let me let me put that. So so let's say one percent of two billion, which is two. twenty. Oh my to god! Twenty million. Twenty million. Yo, my math was shit. I know. No, I was there. As Sorry, well. Jamie McIntyre. It's, it's literally when you start doing the numbers. Twenty million, crazy. and say it's and say say it's ten dollars a month. Twenty. Let's just say it's like if you think about it, fourteen dollars a month, and you only have one million users. That's fourteen million a month. So if you then think at twenty million, like that is like computer numbers, telephone numbers. That's that's crazy. So I get that. Part of me is a bit annoyed because I want to earn that. I want to get that notoriety of being able to. You know what you should have done. You should. Oh, sorry. I thought you you want to earn the blue tick. Yes. I thought you said you wanted to earn the monthly revenue of Facebook. And I was going to say, well, you should have started Facebook then. So, so as much as that, you can't argue with Facebook's thought process around there. Look at the yeah. money, especially when they are they are hemorrhaging money right now. You know, with their whole meta and you know and the the metaverse, the metaverse which stuff, which is a load of shit that's this. just flopped unbelievably. <laughs> so, so, in their way, it's a, a massive revenue generator. If a tiny percentage yeah. just take that, so I guess from a revenue point of view, then it makes sense. But at the same point for me, it I'm like, use the tech, doesn't it? it? But does. like, you know, Twitter have done the one that like if you're a legacy verified account you get a gold tick depending on how long you've mm-hmm. been there for um, and obviously you can hover with your mouse over the blue tick yeah. and it will say this person is verified due to being notable in media news or whatever mm-hmm. or it will say this person is subscribed to Twitter Blue and some of the roasting people again for being subscribed to Twitter Blue is hilarious like so I guess some that of might happen are then. unreal so I don't know like I guess it all depends on I think Instagram would get a much bigger take up of people buying blue ticks than Twitter like a much because of the, I'd say the average age range user on Instagram is far lower than Twitter, and they're just desperate to have those blue ticks. Yeah. So I kind of honestly, I kind of hope they don't do it. I oh hope, no, they will. It's it's already I hope they happening. Don't roll it That's out the thing. Fully. But anyway, I hope if they do, it's like, like red or something. <laughs> like it really like bullies people. It really corners them. So you can still earn the actual real yeah blue, blue tick. tick. Yeah, no, I, I buy into that as well. What about all these people that have spent like a hundred grand getting verified and all that, and then it's like wild. the next day, Elon, not Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg's like, hey, ten dollars. It's absolutely wild. But I guess from from a social media point of view, see if you just go back to to basics and you engage with your audience. I've seen more organic growth because I've been engaging. For sure. Because I'm I'm putting better content out and I still think my content can always get better. I think people want to be, especially in the the nowadays short form just trumps all. It's um you've got to have a good hook. You've got to get attention. It's got to be entertaining. It's got you know, it's if if you're just boring as fuck, if your video quality is just you know, poor not to say some stuff where you just pick up a camera, but these phones these days, the, 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 unreal. the unreal, the quality is great. Yeah. You know, it's not like we're dealing with them in Nokia 5210, right? Aye, Sony Ericsson <laughs> cyber shots and that. <laughs> so it's, um, you know, there's there's definitely content that's just you out there talking on the phone that does well. Some of the modes on the phones, like, it, who was it? Was it not like Steven Spielberg just done a full film on an iPhone or something? No way. Yeah, yeah they've done like a full short film on an iPhone. I've not seen it and I could literally be lying to your face right now because <laughs> I'm pretty sure someone told me this in a PlayStation party. So I've not actually <laughs> went fact checked this whatsoever. But apparently like someone done that. Like, even even yesterday, I was recording a quick video on here with Nathan, and um, he was like, oh, do you, do you want it on normal mode or cinematic? And I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, well, do, you, do you want it on normal mode or cinematic? And I was like, well, show me the difference. And he showed me cinematic, and I was like, what the fuck? So then I had to record a quick video, like, someone who, who um, I used the service asked me for, like, a, a testimonial. So I was like, yeah, cool. So I was, like, setting up my camera, cinematic mode, and I'm like giving it the, the shoulder smolder and that, do you know what I mean? Like, the, the quality of these cameras... It's unbelievable. It's just... 
Exactly. Do you know what the problem is though? To a degree, it's how the social media platforms compress the media. Yeah. Instagram's not too bad for it. Like some of the stuff we've shot on like our big cameras in here, or when me and like Gary have been out and he's been recording on the gimbal and stuff with like the Ace. What what is that? An A seven S three or whatever it is, the camera that we use. Um, and you put it on Instagram, you're like wow like that is unreal yeah. and like every video that's on my youtube channel every single one is 4k like every one is 4k and it takes ages to like upload and like but see when you go on like some on youtube then on rumble as well I'm not sure if you use rumble it's like a competitor to youtube just now and i mean i've obviously got the macbook and the, the imac the big retina display huge one in my office and i was watching stuff in like 8k the other day wow and I'm watching it and I'm like, like I, I'm, I'm truly in disbelief of like, I, it doesn't seem that long ago that w like I was playing Snake on my dad's phone and it was black and white. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So I, I read a thing that said that if, if, if motor vehicles had um, developed as fast as computers, if you, a Rolls Royce would be able to drive something like 150,000 times better than an F1 car. Like, it, it, in theory, you'd be able to drive at like 500 mile an hour and make a perfect left turn, like right angle and not feel anything and go and all that. Like all these different stats about how if other things had developed as fast as computers, like that it would just be absolutely unreal. It's really crazy, isn't it? Just how things start to, to evolve. Yes. And like, the like, speed of technology is just changing. And obviously, y you can only speak about your own time, right? And when you're born isn't up to you, right? But I am so, and this is a guess, but I'm so of the belief that right now has to be the easiest time to become an entrepreneur. It has to be. YouTube, Rumble, Instagram, Facebook, stuff like the Yes Academy, like having the internet right and i mean the internet here and you've got 10 plus hours of battery life and you've got like there is no way that right now with all the different opportunities and the access to education and content and how easy it is to set up a business and build a website and like it must be statistically the easiest time to become an entrepreneur comes yeah. with its own challenges as well i guess there's so much to choose from that you can you can suffer overwhelm but has to be one yeah, of the easiest. It's it's getting so much easier. I mean, for example, I'm teaching my girls financial education and and how to place value in certain things. Uh -huh. And what we do is that um, I've got the app. Let me just make sure because I keep on messing up. It's called Depop, right? Oh, Depop, the Depop. clothes. Yeah, I, 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 I thought you were like going to talk about some groundbreaking no, app. There. No, so, so exactly. Depop's this class, is the point mate. I'm making here. So, so someone class. someone recommended it, and we set up a Depop. Um, uh, account and what we do is uh so like alexa my wife she is into fashion she's got you yeah know, you're fucking she telling had, me she had her own swimwear um, brand and, and everything else right and um, the girls got also because you know people see uh, posts of either my channel or alexa about the girls and and because alexa's contacts a lot of people reach out wanting the girls to uh, model for them and oh, different right, things, yeah. right? And we've, we've said no to everything at the moment, and that may change because it's it's quite exciting to see potentially build up the portfolio. But anyway, so what we have been doing with Depop though is that there's a whole bunch of clothes because kids grow out their clothes so Rapid, fast, right? Yeah, so yeah. fast. So some clothes we will then give away to charity and and and, and other people. You've got three girls, all yeah. different ages, so it's like. Myla can probably fit into stuff that will yeah. Harry and Hannah's before and stuff yeah. like that. So, so, so yeah, there's a mix of that. Some stuff we keep, some stuff we give away, and then some things because I, I want them to to grow up wanting to also contribute and give and, and support others as well. So, so it's some questions should we give this to other people? Should we keep some stuff as well? Should, what should we sell? So it's giving them a good balance, and then um, we'll, we'll take some pictures of the clothes. Sometimes we'll get them to model the clothes, and we'll just kind of cut their heads out or whatever that mm -hmm. may be, and then we pop it in. And literally, we're selling clothes. Now, I truly believe, truly believe that my daughters will be millionaires before the age of 16. And it's only because, and, and it's... On Depop? <laughs> on whatever, like, think about it. Like, artificial intelligence right now, let's think about this. And all the uses that it has is the worst that it's ever going to be. Yeah. So right now, chat GPT, 
which is outrageous in its own form, it's the worst it's ever going to be. So where's it going to be two years, five years from now? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's... Overthrowing impo- governments, probably, it, I think. It's impossible. It's impossible for, for anyone who has access to a phone to not make some serious... It's a choice. It's a choice through yep. limiting beliefs, through what society has taught that person and conditioned them. And this is why... The also what social media has conditioned them, by yeah. the way. Because all of my social media, <coughs> pardon me, because of what I consume and what I watch, a lot of it affirms what I believe, right? So a lot of the videos I see are successful people and supercars, watches, the things that I find interesting, right? But then if you're someone who fucking lives in your mum's basement with your little fucking communist hat on and you're a wee loser, right? Your, like, feed is probably going to be like that. And that's why you start hating people that have had success. Oh, no, success can't happen across the board and this is what we need to do. And I wish Karl Marx was my dad and, like, just they just be losers, right? So their feed is probably reaffirming their beliefs every day. It's the power of social media, I guess, is that it, it shows you what you want to see, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, so yeah. you're correct in that it is a choice. They choose to consume that content and be shown more of that content when they could choose to use their time better and make money. You yeah, know? no, for sure. I think uh, probably our next podcast we do is talk about artificial intelligence and, and and have a proper chat about that. Yeah. I mean, I guess to summarise some of the stuff we've been talking about just now is really, you know, we, we got off on track talking about, you know, social media and and engaging on it and why in today's day and age it's um, a phenomenal tool Mm -hmm. you know uh, rather than being a consumer so you're just caught up in it it's actually being a producer putting content out there and improving on it i mean it's not rocket science it's just being consistent look and see what works and do more of it Mm -hmm. look at what other people are doing that's working and 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 do some of that as well and 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 back some of your best performers with some ad spend and 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 you know and and talk about a niche and get into something and stand for something and be a bit more vocal and by doing that you'll build an engaged following and if you make social sociable by contributing there and engaging, then you're going to have people that will do business with you, buy whatever you're offering, you know. You can expedite you. that process greatly with AI as well. And, yeah. you know, me and you have talked about it at length and, and used different things. And obviously, I'm just about to drop the um, top three AI systems that we've been using um, and a little a free downloadable ebook which will be awesome so i think being able to take that and then expand on it and maybe sit down i don't know mate i think we could talk for hours about that to be honest because yeah. there's so many applications outside of business as well like the, a couple of days ago i got chat gpt to write me a meal plan for the week ingredients recipes everything yeah obviously i just went to asda and bought ready meals and <laughs> put them in the fridge i'd never fucking used it but i like it's just it's is it madness what i'm convinced that they've just got loads of people locked in a room somewhere who are just answering the questions like super geniuses and they're hitting them with sticks and that that's that's what i think that's what i think is happening there's no way a machine is doing that mate that's it's all insane. people it's it really all is. people all right good stuff so i guess it's always good to to chat and share some things to help um you know help the you know those that are looking to just improve on their own you know personal growth you know and 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 as always like uh we appreciate those that are listening and hope yeah, that yeah. You, you subscribe to us and 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 you know drop a comment in the the you know the comment box below if you get any questions or anything that we can do anything you want to talk about anything that you know that that's your thoughts on artificial intelligence or on social and we'll be in there and we'll respond to you as well yes perfect thank you very much for joining us and if you by followers you are a fucking loser <laughs>